Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, uh, a warm welcome to everybody, and uh, once again, uh, Alhamdulillah, to a new uh, series of uh, sessions, uh, the Rasail uh, readings. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, uh, this is now, although we've had a few before. Uh, we did have the first one of this year, uh, uh, last uh, month, a few weeks ago, the last one. And uh, so, inshallah, this is now the second one, uh, although it might end up being uh, number three in the overall counting. Uh, but uh, alhamdulillah. Anyway, um, again, what's the purpose <coughs> of these uh, these readings? Um, it's not necessarily to do a full tahqiq uh, of this particular issue, but it's to give us some sense of... Um, uh, expanding, uh, expansive of our, our horizons with respect to certain uh, masail, certain discussions, uh, and the like. But of course, uh, necessarily within that, we'll discuss uh, many ahkam. Uh, but the idea is that um, this is not necessarily always the end of the story, right? So, uh, so although we'll have some discussion, uh, there might be further uh, discussion uh, elsewhere. Um, so the purpose is not necessarily to kind of uh, fully um, solve the issue and every single issue which is mentioned. Uh, but uh, but of course, um, inshallah, I'll try to offer my comments um, here and there um, just to give more a bit more clarity on some of the things that are mentioned, uh, whether here or in other uh, Rasail or the like um, as well. <clears throat> uh, but just so n nobody uh, misunderstands <laughs> what's going on here, if you want the full picture, take a dars. Right, go and uh, sit in the class. The point of this is these aren't beginner sessions, although it might look like, oh, oh fun, we're going to read about the 15th of Shaban. Um, it's actually a lot more technical than that. Um, and that's the point of these uh, recited readings, that they are um, somewhat technical in nature, and they assume uh, something of um, some uh, previous uh, background exposure to ilm, the sciences, the, the ulum, fiqh, hadith, and other sciences, and all, although I'll kind of touch upon things. Um, I'm trying to also keep it relatively brief so we can do it in a single majlis in a short session so there's uh, an opportunity to kind of benefit somehow but uh, naturally we could uh, we you know we could have like a whole week of sessions just on this risala right it, it kind of uh, covering the de uh, covering all of the issues in a lot more detail so um so there's more uh, that can there's always uh, uh, more to the story more to discuss uh, you can get more and more technical uh, but uh, inshallah, uh, we have a purpose, and inshallah, we'll try to uh, stick to that purpose, uh, generally speaking. Uh, just some housekeeping, as I mentioned last time as well, um, that unfortunately mics are off just because uh, I don't want to get interrupted by somebody who uh, their cat turns their mic on or something, and then, uh, you know, then the dog's barking in the background, and then, uh, you know, the babies are crying and all of that, and somebody accidentally says something that they shouldn't have said, and now it's permanently etched into the recording. So in order to save us from all of that... Um, then uh, the mics are off, but of course, uh, you're welcome to uh, to kind of be present live as some of you are already, uh, and that's certainly encouraged. And also um, uh, to to talk to me through the through the chat box, uh, whether it be co uh, comments, uh, questions, and the like, then uh, that's all welcome. Um, also, um, it, it's good for you to kind of use um, express express yourself. So I know that people are following uh, you here, uh, whether it be just with emoticons with. Uh, you know, putting your thumbs up or thumbs down or a happy face or a sad face. So at least I know what's happening and people are following and it's making sense or it's not making sense uh, because hopefully we want to get to the end with some degree of, of uh, clarity and not uh, confusion. <laughs> um, so Alhamdulillah, having said uh, uh, all of that, um, <clears throat> inshallah, let's, let's begin uh, talking about uh, today's session. So today's session, of course, is about a very uh, grand and uh, blessed uh, 
uh, occasion, which is the night of the 15th of Sha'ban, uh, which is uh, coming. Well, it depends on where you are. So it might already be here, might not be here, might be coming. Uh, so uh, and and that's uh, that's a side uh, that's a side point. Maybe we can get to that a bit later on. Um, but it's a very momentous uh, occasion. Um, and that's why m many of the ulama have actually written that uh, asail to talk about uh, the uh, the night itself, uh, the virtues and the merit of the night, uh, and also what type of uh, how what you should do in the night, how you should spend your night, and with not necessarily getting into all of the details. But inshallah, we'll touch upon some of these types of issues. Um, and of course, there's a lot of overlap with uh, the Laylatul Qadr. Right, especially with uh, Surah al dukhan uh, and there being some discussion about uh, when certain things happen, right, with respect to what the Quran is saying, is it in reference to Laylatul Bara'a, right, or Laylatul Nisuf min Sha'ban, or is it Laylatul Qadr, right? So there's uh, there's some discussion about, uh, and that and that's why sometimes the ulama actually wrote uh, books. Um, containing uh discussing both issues right sometimes both sometimes one but sometimes it kind of it's referenced elsewhere um so there's a lot there and um it behooves of uh, behooves uh, all of us to kind of be aware of um uh the the kind of things that the ulama talked about or when it came to um issues like this and how they address them the kinds of things that they said and what we should take away um, from uh, such uh, such occasions and also such readings. <clears throat> With respect to those ulama who actually wrote something uh, on it, uh, then of course you have um, probably one of the uh, the early. Although this is this is just to give a sense of it. It's not necessarily to kind of. Um, There's not like an exhaustive uh, list. It's not like I went away and did like so much research uh, on this. Uh, but the idea is that. Um, uh, an early write, uh, writer that I found uh, on uh, the, um, again, without trying too hard, um, is the Tahliyat Shaban fi Maruya fi Laylat al Nisaf bin Jaban by uh, Muhammad ibn Tulun al Dimishqi al Hanafi, who was the 10th century Hijri. Um, uh, Damascene uh, scholar, although I have his collection of Rasail, it doesn't it wasn't in there, but I haven't actually looked to see if the PDF or anything like that is available. I'm not sure if it's published. Unfortunately, that's a problem with a lot of the Torah, a lot of the tradition um, is unpublished, especially the smaller treatises and, and the like. And that's why um, it's a tremendous service when we have uh, these um, uh, publishing houses when they go and publish like a, a bunch of rasail, like a hundred rasail of uh, so-and-so. This is uh, it's always extremely beneficial. So um, it's one of the things which, uh, not a hundred, but uh, but they did publish a good 20, 25, maybe even 30 or 40 rasail of Nuh Afendi. Uh, so that's why we've actually ended up with uh, with this uh, copy, Nuh Afendi also being uh, a 10th century, uh, also 11th century uh, scholar. <clears throat> Before him, uh, because he's 1070. Uh, before him, you also had uh, Mullah Ali Al Qari, um, who is uh, recite, uh, who is writing um, his Hath uh, Rahman bi Fadail Shaban Mullah Ali Al Qari, of course, uh, being uh, uh, the author uh, whose work uh, we read in the last session, Al Adab fi Rajab. Um, so, uh, so he also has uh, something on uh, Shaban. Uh, he also, uh, importantly, has a whole uh, risala which is uh, titled the Tibyan, a Tibyan, um, where he talks about both the Laylat al Nusuf min Shaban and also Laylat al Qadr. It's actually published in his Rasail, um, which I did have nearby. I'm not sure where it is now, uh, but uh, but he so he has mul multiple Rasail on the issue. Um, and then 12th century, you have. إفاضة uh, المنان في نشر فضائل ليلة النصف من شعبان of uh, زين العابدين ابن محمد العباسي الخليفة um, so he's 1130 like, so he's 12th century um, and finally and also in the 13th century العرائس الحسان في شرح فضائل ليلة النصف من شعبان of uh, حسين ابن سليم الدجاني I actually have a typo where I wrote that it should be الدجاني um, and of course, it wasn't just Hanafis, 
Right, who are writing on the uh, Nisaf Min Shaban. You have, uh, of course, uh, scholars from all of the Madahib uh, writing uh, with uh, uh, some early writings manifesting. Even Ibn Asakir has like a collection where he talks about, and he's 6th century, uh, 570 or 571, where he talks about the uh, the uh, hadith <coughs> about the uh, Laylat al Nisaf Min Shaban. Uh, also, uh, other uh, significant scholars include. Uh, uh, Ibn Hajar al-Haytami with his Al-Iwah wal bayan uh, So Al-Haytami al-Makki, uh, of course, is a great uh, uh, Shafi'i uh, Thaqi um, and uh, very influential, of course, even on Mullah Ali al-Qali. Um, but that's for a story for another time. I think I talked about it actually in the uh, in the last session. Um, and there's also Abdul Rauf uh, al-Munawi, uh, also a Shafi'i, uh, very significant um, scholar. He has the Fayd uh, al-Qadir. On um, and of course, that's just one book on uh, Sulti's collection of the spoken uh, hadiths of the Prophet والسلام, which is the Jami' of Sahil, which is the Muhtasa of the abridgment of his Jami' of Kabir. Uh, so it's called the Fayd al Qadir. He also has a Muhtasa, an abridgment of his commentary. Um, uh, but uh, but the idea is that there's many <laughs> many of the ulama who are writing on the the virtues of this uh, this particular night. Um, yeah, I did allude to it before, but I guess if I can just mention it now. Um, but uh, if you're here, I guess in generally in the UK, <laughs> then uh, it's most likely that you'll be uh, that the Leila the Nusuf will be tomorrow. Um, and if if you're elsewhere, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening uh, elsewhere. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> um, it's uh, these types of things. Uh, whether like. It's a relative experience, right? So it's subject to you. It's like, and this is how zaman works, right? So even even in the and that's why that's why people sometimes read about the ulama how they had so much barakah in their times, right? And that's why even on Yom Al Qiyamah we'll see how people will be in the same place, but they will experience time differently, right? So the idea is that time is also there's a subjective element to it. So uh, so in reality. It doesn't matter if somebody else is doing Laylat al Nisuf, you know, next week, as it were. Like, you know, it's like some other day. It's like the day before you, you're doing it a different day. It's like, how can there be two Laylat al Nisuf min Shaban? The idea is that it's relative to you, it's subjective to you. Um, and in reality, from even just from a spiritual perspective, it's the uh, the the moment in which you recognize your Rabadiya, your slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the moment in which you recognize and you you recognize what is required from you as an abd before your lord right this is this is the greatest moment when it leads to that tawbah when it leads to that returning back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this this moment can manifest at at any point right but of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um he has uh, as we saw last time his uh, special there are special times there are special places where there's uh, uh, an increased sense of uh, acceptance, an increased sense of mercy, right? Uh, and uh, so all of these types of mani, which just mean that your moments will only lead to a greater apa. They only lead to more reception of gifts, right? The gifts from these divine gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, um, so that's just so I don't want anybody to kind of tell me now that it's happening on this day and that day and start talking about moon sighting. Let's, let's put all of that aside now. I've answered this question. So let us now, uh, inshallah, proceed forth uh, with uh, the reading, um, inshallah ta'ala. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Fakal Musanif Rahimahullah ta'ala, wa nifana bihi, wa bi alumihi wa barakatihi wa anwarihi, ameen. He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidi al anbiya wa al mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwadihi ajma'in. وعلى الذين اتبعوهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. And so he begins by praising Allah subhanahu wa taala and sending blessings upon the Prophet, uh, uh, the the leader of the prophets and the messengers, عليه الصلاة عليه الصلاة والسلام and upon his family and his companion uh, companions and his wives, all of them, and upon those who follow them with excellence until the final day. Uh, so he says to proceed for Yaqul Abdul Dalil, Arraji Afwa Mawlahun Jalil, Nuh ibn Mustafa al Hanafi, Amalahumullah, Amalah, 
هم الله تعالى بلطفه الخفي هذه رسالة علقتها على ليلة النصف من شعبان وسميتها بعقد المرجان في فضل ليلة النصف من شعبان والله مستعان وعليه التكلام So he says the lowly servant the one who is seeking the pardon of his majestic master Nuh ibn Mustafa al-Hanafi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, cover them uh, both I, his father Mustafa and himself um, with his uh, uh, subtle uh, Gen gentleness uh, and um, he says that this is a short epistle <clears throat> uh, which I put together on the Laylat al-Nasf min Sha'ban and I called it Ta'aqd al-Majan fi fadli Laylat al-Nasf min Sha'ban so one thing I forgot to do um, which um, I guess I did uh, last time which was just to uh, make a couple of comments about the uh, about the author as well. Um, so of course, Nuh uh, ibn Mustafa um, Effendi is an 11th century um, faqih, uh, Hanafi faqih, mufti, um, somebody who was uh, well known um, in in that time uh, for the a tremendous legacy which he left behind. Of course, he is also uh, he is also Khalwati, so part of the uh, Khalwati uh, tariqa. Um, in terms of um, his uh, um, his uh, spiritual qibla, as it were, a uh, spiritual direction, uh, and of course, um, it's uh, it's quite interesting because it was in that region. There's a lot of uh, the Khalwatiya seem to have an impact. So even Ibn Abidin's uh, son, Alauddin Abidin, is also Khalwati, right? So he also has an ijaza in the Khalwati uh, tariqa as well. Um, but um, but he takes um, ilm. Um, and his Asanid passes uh, all the way through to uh, Ali ibn Ghanim al-Maqtisi. So he actually takes it from Abdul Karim uh, al-Susi, who is the student of Ali ibn Ghanim al-Maqtisi. And if you recall from last time, we covered uh, ibn Ghanim al-Maqtisi's, uh, or we talked about him uh, a little bit, and we dipped into his Rasala, the Rad'ur Raqib. So uh, when we were looking at the Salatul Raqib, then we dipped into his, uh, his Rasala. So uh, Sunu so ibn Mustafa Afendi, he actually has um, a senad going back to uh, back to him through one of his uh, one of his students, right? And um, and uh, the he of course left as I mentioned uh, a number of uh, important uh, rasail, uh, which uh, many of which have been uh, maybe not many of which, but a good number of which have been published um, in recent uh, in recent times. But probably his uh, perhaps his greatest uh, legacy was um, his um, hashia on the Dura al hukam the hashia on the Dura al hukam um, which is a massive uh, hashia, um, even in the old uh, Bulaq uh, kind of print, um, of which I, I do actually have uh, a copy. I actually found it lying around somewhere. Um, in Turkey, uh, at one time, uh, at one at one time, and it's um, it's it, I, I think it only gets to the middle of Kitab Salah, um, and that's about three hundred pages or something, three four hundred pages of like um, A four text, um, in small print, um, so you can get a sense of uh, <laughs> you know what this Hashi on the Durar actually looks like. So it's a tremendous work, and he's uh, oft quoted by even the likes of Ibn Abidin. Uh, so he's um, he's a very popular. He's not again the, the reason for mentioning all of this is just like Mullah Ali Al Qali. He's he's quite a significant person. He's not just like some unknown kind of Ottoman scholar. And there were like thousands of them. He's actually quite a prominent uh, scholar as well um, uh, because of that. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> uh, let us uh, return. So he says, uh, yeah. So he begins with the. Uh, this hadith now. So he says, أخرج ابن ماجة وعبد الرزاق عن سيدنا علي رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا كان ليلة النصف من شعبان فقوموا ليلها وصوموا نهارها فإن الله تعالى ينزل فيها من غروب الشمس إلى سماء الدنيا فيقول ألا من مستغفر فأغفر له ألا من مسترزق فأرزقه ألا من ممتن فأوعافية
So this is uh, so this is the hadith. So what does he say? He says that it's um, that both uh, Ibn Majah and Abdul Razak um, reported that Sayyidina Ali Ramallahu ta'ala wajhahu, uh, said that the Prophet Ali wasalam, said that once it's uh, the Laylat al Nusuf min Sha'ban, uh, the 15th of uh, Sha'ban, uh, uh, once it manifests, so pray during its night. And fast during its day. And the day, of course, comes after the night. So it's a 15th day and the night is preceded. Um, I, the night comes before. He says, So, of course, this is now a question of, um, it becomes like a, an aqidah question. So, what's the nature of nuzul? Because nuzul linguistically is the idea of descent. So, it's almost like if you consider linguistically what's happening, then it's almost like um, there's a descent. But, of course, we know that is mustahid, that this is not possible, this is muqal, right? That's inconceivable and it's absurd for this to apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will there be a sense of movement from one location to another location because there are many entailments of this which uh, would negate uh, realities about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we are absolutely certain of uh, given the fact that he has told us that and there are uh, his uh, sifat which the ulama uh, mentioned of his uh, being uh, completely dissimilar to his create uh, to to creation like this this is um the right? So, um, so this idea of being completely dissimilar, and that's what's understood also by This is why um, we'll see in a moment where he quotes um, other uh, ulama explaining what exactly is meant by this idea of the nuzul. So, um, so let us come back to this in just a second when he explains. So, let's just finish the rest of the hadith. So, he says, um, so when this from when the sun goes down. Um, he says to the this guy of this world, so he says, So is there anybody seeking forgiveness? So I I may forgive them. And is anybody seeking a risk? So I may grant them risk. And is there anybody afflicted? So that I may relieve them of their affliction. Is there anybody such and such or such and such? Until Fajr, right? So until uh, Fajr time, until the morning time. Uh, so now I'll have to zoom in. Uh, let me do it like this. Um, so inshallah, it's still clear to everyone. Uh, so he says, uh, right? So that's the hadith now. So now he wants to comment on uh, this idea, of course. Uh, so what does he say? Um, he says, al muradu bin nuzuli hun hada. Right. So what does uh, Imam Bayhaq he say here? He said what's meant by Nuzul is the Nuzul of one of the angels. Right. So there's the, the descent of the angels. This of course is possible. Right. So why is he saying that? This is one of the great Imams of Islam. Why is he saying that? Again, it's not it's not conceivable. Like for there to be movement with respect to the, the that Al Ilahiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not possible. So he says, وَقَالَ الْعِرَاقِي النُّزُولُ هَذَا صِفَةٌ لَهُ uh, صِفَةٌ لَهُ تعالى وَرَدَ بِهِ السَّمْعُ فِي الْأَحَدِيثِ الصَّحِيحَةِ أَوْ هُوَ عَلَى حَذْفِ الْمُضَافِ وَالتَّقْدِيرُ يَنْزِلُ أَمْرُهُ أَوْ مَلَكٌ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ بِإِذْنِهِ So what's, uh, what's the, the, um, the way that the ulama they interpret such uh, nusus where there's something um, <clears throat> Which is being transmitted, but it's not it's not possible for this to apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the madhab of the Ahl Sunnah is simply the first step is simply to do tanzi, to transcend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond any similarity to his creation. Right? So this is always the first step. So this is the idea of tanzi. That the vahir of the mana which indicates any similarity to how creation uh, is and how it functions with respect to being present in a certain space, right? And then moving from one space and occupying a different space. Again, this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not within his creation. He is not bound by uh, time and space and so on. He is the creator of these things, right? Um, so this is why when they see something like this, then the first step is to do tenzi, right? 
so this is to exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond any similarity to his creation. And this is this is the point at which you have two madhabs which then follow. The idea of the what later sometimes the ulama, even though it's not necessarily it's an um it's an aglavi type of principle, not necessarily an absolute, which is the idea of the madhab of the salaf and the madhab of the khalaf. The madhab of the salaf being one of the fuil, uh consigning the, the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Suspending any form of judgment. And the the madhab of ta'wil adopted by many of the later scholars, um, even though of course it has precedent, right? There's precedent both ways, and there's a lot more detail than this, but this is a, a popular kind of way of uh, of uh, talking about the issue. You have the ta'wil where there's some type of acceptable interpretation what exactly uh, could be meant by this particular thing. So this is why he mentions over here um, this idea, ta'ala. so it being a sifat, what does that mean? There's essentially doing a sense of uh, tafwil. So um, essentially returning uh, this manner to like whatever this means, then Allah knows best, right? But it doesn't mean movement from one place to another, right? That, that's That's what, uh, effectively is being affirmed by this first statement um, and then he, he says that there's another possibility which is that there's a mudaf right there's a mudaf which has been um, hidden right this is hadfil mudaf this is what he's saying over here um, so this is why he says yanzilu amruhu aw malakum min al malaika right which is what Bayhaqi also mentioned as well um, and this is why um, uh, another way to conceive of this idea of the nuzul is simply to recognize, um, as uh, you know, some of like uh, Abu Muhin al Nasafi, for example, in his Bahr al Kalam, he actually comments on this exact um, issue. So when he talks about the idea of um, the nuzul, um, he says, "An nuzul min Allah al itla' wal iqbal ala ibadhi, yani yanzuru ila ibadhi bil rahma." كذا رويا عن سيدنا علي. So the idea of uh, t turning uh, and for there to be more directedness, as it were, more attention, as it were, right, given to the ibad, such that uh, there's more mercy which is manifesting. Right. This is this is what's meant by the idea of nuzul. It's to indicate there's a, there's a greater mercy which is manifesting at that time, and that's metaphorically represented in the language which is used like in in the arabic so it it gives it brings up a manner in your mind and this is the meaning of this entire thing not that there's a literal so if you literally understand it as god moved from one place to another then you you haven't understood according to the principles of ilm and that's why you cannot understand hadith of the prophet والسلام, or any verse of the quran without usul fiqh right this is a mistake you cannot understand anything without usul. You can't just do literal translation like I check my hands there and this is what it says and therefore this is what it means. This is this is mistake. Like you have to understand nas according to the qawaid of fahm, right? The principles of understanding nas. And what are those? Those are delineated in usul fiqh. So that's why we are able to, and that's why, you know, here are the great ulama of Islam. Half the Zayn Din al Iraqi. It says, uh, you can see uh, Al Imam Bayhaqi. And then I just quoted, you know, Abu Mu'in al Nasafi. These are the great Imams of the tradition, right? So they're all saying one thing. You turn around and say, God moved, right? <laughs> it's like, then obviously there's a problem here, right? Like it's 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 not that everybody is mistaken and you're right. Um, don't think so. Hi, hi, of yourself. Um, so anyway, so this is. Um, this is the first comment that he makes. He says, right, So this is until uh, Fajr, uh, until the rising of dawn. He says, right. He said that this is a clear and um, explicit with respect to the limit of this idea of the uh, the 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 nuzul which now we're representing as uh, as a greater mercy, <clears throat> he says is fajr. Right? The limit is fajr. 
He says, وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَدُمُّ إِلَى انْقِضَاءِ الصُّبْحِ um, It doesn't remain all the way till the end right, of uh, Fajr time, as it were. He says, فَهَذَا مِنْ خَصَائِصِ هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ فَإِنَّ بَقِيَّةَ الْلَيَالِ يَنْزِلُ فِيهَا حَيْثُ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْأَخِيرِ So he says, so this is one of the distinguishing characteristics of this night in the sense that this idea of the, the greater mercy which is manifesting at this time um, or, or, the, or the great manif manifestation of uh, mercy, um, it happens throughout the night. Uh, so he, this is why he says um, that for the rest of the nights, then of course this only happens when there is uh, in the last third. Right, it's only the last third of the night where this is uh, this is uh, th this manifests. Right, so this is so from this perspective, you can see how it's also considered to be quite a special, a special night. He says, "Afat al Hadith al Madkur istihbab sawmi yom al Nasfi min Shaban." Wa in kana zayif al Isnad kama zakrahu al Imam al Nawawi, رضي الله تعالى عنه فإنه ذكر أنه يستحب صوم يوم النصف واستدل بهذا الحديث وذكر أن إسناده ضعيف. Okay, so now he just the slight digression. There's a separate point now. What's a separate point? This is now. He says that this hadith, that what do we learn from this hadith? That it's recommended now to fast the the day of the 15th. Right? He says even if it is, uh, even if the isnad and the chain of transmission of this particular narration is considered to be weak. He says, uh, as Imam Nawawi actually mentioned. So he says, so he's, uh, what did he say? He says, recommended to fast this day. And he used this hadith as evidence. And he said, he actually said that this hadith is considered to be a daif with respect to its chain. Where did Nawi say this? I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> We'd have to go and check and look up. But that's that's besides the point. So he's just using that to kind of as an entry point into uh, this discussion. Uh, so this is why he says, uh, He says, Right. So what's he say is what's he saying now? He says that uh, the the and the fuqaha and others have said that it's permitted, uh, but rather it's recommended, right, to act in accordance with uh, certain meritorious actions. And uh, yeah, he says a fadail amal. He says um, issues which talk about um, encouragement and. Um, and, uh, and warnings and the like, he says, with a weaker hadith, as long as it is not fabricated. So, if it's maldua, this is when it's considered to be uh, problematic, i.e. that it's completely fabricated against the Prophet ﷺ. So, a hadith which is uh, wa'if uh, is missing one of its uh, one of the uh, shurut, right? With a with a, you know of of those which makes a hadith sound. Um, and of course, those are well known. The idea of the adala or the dabt or the its connectedness, right? So the idea that hadith is more self, for example, um, that it's you know the the tabai kind of mentioned that he heard it directly from the the Prophet Ali for example, that that that, that there's missing that that uh, first tabaqa, uh, or, or there's uh, some other type of illa which is present, uh, some type of. Uh, uh, Mukhalifa, for example, to a stronger narration, and so on and so forth. So these are important conditions uh, which you learn about in our Anum and Hadith. So um, depending on the nature of what's missing, then it can enter into this realm. So a Hadith which is Daif still potentially has an Asl. It is not. It's not a fabrication, right? So it still has. Uh, it still has some type of Asl. And that's why the ulama mentioned things like this. If you recall from the previous uh, session as well, we also talked about this idea. Imam Ali Al Qali also brought out this idea. We also had, um, we also went into a bit of detail with respect to what others of the ulama also talked about. Um, in specific, and inshallah, I'll probably allude to that again uh, a bit later on. Uh, but this is, um, it's an interesting. Uh, discussion because they also bring up the idea that this is acceptable as long as the hadith is not shadid uh, al intensely weak. How so? Again, he will specify that in just a moment. So we'll see that in just a second. Um, but here in this first statement, he says, as long as not maldua. 
And if you call, recall from last time, there was a whole discussion that we had about this, right? That's why I'm alluding to that. Uh, somebody asked a question here. Yeah, um, can you uh, elaborate on what happens if great ulama like Imam Nawi declare it to be weak, but some contemporary uh, scholars uh, de declare it fabricated? <laughs> um, of course, there are different uh, there are different um, like uh, manahij when it comes to uh, some of these types of things as well. Um, so sometimes you have to kind of uh, take those types of things into consideration. Um, undoubtedly, there is a if you're talking if you're talking about um, so right now he's talking about the fast, right? So he's talking about the fast. He's not necessarily talking about the um, the the night because it's pretty clear, um, as we'll continue to to see, that uh, that this is uh, uh, it's the the fadl and the virtue of this night is established from the time of the salaf, right? And there's many many narrations about it, and there's many statements from the early salaf um, about it. So it's certainly something which is which is there, and certainly something which is established. Um, but uh, in terms of the um, the the sunniyah or the istihbab that he mentions here, the recommendation, then uh, that's why it becomes a discussion of acting on the base uh, on the basis of weak uh, hadiths and the like. So the idea is that there are certain conditions uh, for this. I can't remember now if he's going to mention um, mention this, um, but uh, but generally speaking, I think we'll see Ibn Abi Sharif in just a moment. But um, but as long as it's not deemed to be a sunnah, right? So if it's a weak hadith with respect to practicing it, as long as it's not uh, fabricated, it's not shadid laf in accordance with the 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 general principle mentioned by many of the the uh, hadith, even Ibn Hajar and Zakhawi and others. <clears throat> even though there's somebody again, this whole discussion, there's there's more nuance to uh, as we kind of alluded to last time, but even beyond that, there's uh, there's discussions. Um, even Sikhawi himself, when he's saying these types of things, for example, he still uses, <laughs> like, even if it's like a hadith ends up being like shadid laf, right, it's uh, it's intensely weak, he'll still sometimes say that, actually, this you can do this. And it's like, well, that negates your principle, right? But but anyway, there's, uh, there's a wider discussion uh, to be had. Uh, but, uh, but as long as... Uh, like I mentioned, um, it, uh, it's not deemed to be a sunnah, it generally falls uh, under uh, an asl which is uh, thabit in the uh, sharia. Right? So, um, an asl which is thabit in the sharia. I'm missing one thing. <laughs> um, I'm trying to recall. Shall it come to me in a second? Um, Or maybe maybe that's the the yeah maybe it's uh, that it's not uh, that it's not intensely weak. It has an awesome in the Sharia. It's not deemed to be a Sunnah, right? Um, so as long as that's the case, then the idea is that can you act in accordance with it? Then as long as you're not ascribing it to the Prophet Ali you're not affirming that it's any type of uh, uh, you know Sunnah and the like. Then it's um, it's possible to do this. Right? It's possible to do this. Um, and there's a fadila uh, by virtue of the fact that it's something which is uh, whose merit is uh, is already established in the Sharia, right? So that's what we'll see in just a moment with respect to a certain dhikr or a certain dua, um, or if it's uh, if it uh, relates to prayer or fasting or anything like that. So um, so it's possible, right? It's possible to do those types of things. Um, so anyway, let's see. Waqal uh, ibn Abi Sharif. Ibn Abi Sharif, uh, and he's a Shafi'i uh, faqih. Uh, but interestingly, he's he's also a student of Ibn Uthman, he's a student of Ibn Hajar, but also Ibn Uthman. That's why he actually has a famous uh, commentary on the uh, Musayara. Right? So he has a commentary on Sharh on the Sharh um, al-Aqaid, Nasafiyah. He also has a commentary on the uh, the Musayara of uh, Ibn Uthman. Um, yeah, so I guess he was influenced. Uh, but um, he says, أي أنه إذا ثبت لعمل فضل شرعا على الإطلاق 
كالصلاة والدعاء والذكر وورد حديث يتضمن فضل دعاء خاص وذكر خاص أو صلاة مخصوصة استحب العمل بمقتضى ذلك الحديث لدخوله فيما ثبت فعله مع احتمال صحة هذا الحديث الضعيف وليس المراد إثبات الاستحباب الذي هو حكم شرعي بذلك الحديث انتهى um, So it's a very nice uh, kind of statement which again is expresses the hal of the ulama when it comes to these types of things uh, What is he saying? He says that if there is some merit which is established for a certain act uh, in the sharia <clears throat> he says such as some type of prayer or dua or dhikr he says and there's a specific hadith which talks about the merit of a specific type of dua right so there's, a, there's an action in and of itself which is established whose merit is established and then there's a specific dua which is transmitted or a specific dhikr or a specific type of prayer then he says that it's recommended to act on the uh, on, on the basis of this particular hadith because it falls under something which is already established uh, whilst entertaining the possibility that it might actually be true, right? So just because the hadith da'if, the idea is that there can, there's a possibility that it is actually a statement of the Prophet ﷺ, it's just the likelihood of that is low. That, that's the point of it being a hadith which is da'if. It's not, fabric, it's not a fabrication, right? So he says, and the point of all of this is not to affirm that it's recommended to do this particular thing, right? That's establishing a hukum shara'i. Right, to establish hukum shara'i through these types of things, that's not acceptable. That's not what they're talking about. But they're just saying that if you do this particular thing, then you would have done a prayer. Like if the thing is a prayer, which is recommended, for example, or similarly a fast, right? Then you fast it. So you have a thawab for your fast. So there's nothing blameworthy about that, right? It's not, there's no, there's no bid'ah which is associated with it. It just falls under a general asal, right? And the person isn't deeming it to be a sunnah, but maybe like you do something um, and then you have 10 mountains of uh, whatever. Uh, I don't know, somebody really likes honey or something. 10 mountains of honey in the, in like Jannah. So you say, oh, that sounds really cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. So um, so the idea is that there's some type of encouragement. It's not necessarily a fabrication. This is a complete fabrication, which I just made it up. <laughs> but I didn't ascribe it to anything. I'm just making a point. Um, but the idea is that somebody does it. As long as they don't deem it to be a sunnah, it falls under an asal, then this is considered to be acceptable. Now, Nuh Hafendi, he, he adds something, like uh, appends something to the statement, which is an important condition, as we've been talking about. He says, qalu. But they also said, amali bil hadith al um, He says, And la yakuna shadid al dhaf Fakharaj bihada al qaid ma tafarrad bihi kathabun aw muttahmun. So he says, um, but they also said that the condition of acting in accordance with certain weak hadiths is that it cannot be in, oops, uh, sorry, it's this side. It cannot be intensely weak, right? This is what he means by shadid al daf. So he says, uh, so this, uh, this condition now, it includes somebody who is uh, who transmits something and they are known to be a kathab or they are uh, accused of lying or they are somebody who makes a lot of mistakes and the like we are specific terms which are used by the ulama of uh, in in ulum al hadith so he says wallahu so uh, so this is just uh, that that's pretty much the extent of what he wants to say about the idea of uh, fasting but um, an additional thing that i guess although i haven't actually seen any nas uh, in the books of the fuqaha um uh, I mean, unless you count this as one of the books of the Fuqaha, uh, but uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, the key works, uh, the primers, and which are expressing, you know, explaining madhab and masail and the like, uh, where they mentioned fasting the fifteenth of uh, Shaban. Um, however, there is uh, certainly, um, um, even if we um, affirm that this hadith doesn't fulfill the the conditions because no Havendi seems to be cool with it. So even though he's meant, mentioned and appended this uh, this idea over here, he simply seems to be relying on the fact that Imam Nawi and others have deemed it to be recommended and it's a uh, Baif hadith. So clearly, if it was uh, further wor worse than that, then they wouldn't have kind of recommended it. So that's what he seems to be kind of relying on. But even if we say now it's actually weaker than that, Right, as um, as the questioner, for example, is even alluding to, um, that perhaps some people say that. Then, of course, we also have a general recommendation of fasting the white days anyway. 
right? So on the 13th, uh, 14th, uh, 15th is already considered to be a general um, recommended uh, sunnah. Um, even the month of Sha'ban, as we saw uh, uh, last time, <clears throat> um, there's uh, the Hadith in Nasa'i, which even uh, Ibn Hajar uh, mentioned uh, in his Risala on Rajab, where the Prophet uh, mentions how people ignore the month of Sha'ban and how the Prophet would fast a lot in the month of Sha'ban, um, even sometimes, like, even like almost as it were, like the entire month. So th there's a lot of general encouragement in the, um, you know, even fa about fasting this day and also fasting in the month of Sha'ban. And generally speaking, is also a sunnah of fasting before Ramadan, right? So um, so th there's lots to kind of affirm um, a sense of it being um, acceptable to practice even without this hadith, right? So um, so that's why if somebody did uh, does uh, kind of proceed to, to fast it, then it's recommended anyway to fast on that day. So they have like a double a double fadila as it were, um, that if it is uh, thabit and if it is um, established, uh, and like through this, as some of the ulama said, I think you can find even even Rajab uh, al hanbali in his uh, Lataif al Ma'arif where he talks about the. Um, the wadaif of various uh, months uh, and the like. I think you'll find um, even he uh, talks about this issue. I can't remember exactly what he says now, but I think there might be some allusion to the fact that it's acceptable to fast as well. So you can see there's enough kind of general, uh, a general basis for uh, for people fasting uh, on on account of this hadith, but otherwise even on account of just general sunnah. So um, so anyway, that's the extent. This is just as an aside. He brought up the issue of fasting. I mean, he really just wants to talk about the merit of the night itself. So, uh, so let's continue now. He says, وأخرج الإمام أحمد والترمذي وابن ماجه عن سيد عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تعالى ينزل ليلة النصف من شعبان إلى سماء الدنيا فيغفر لأكثر من عدد شعر غنم غنم قلب. So, um, so in this next uh, hadith uh, from Sayyid Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, again directs himself with his mercy as we talked about before on the night of the uh, uh, 15th of Sha'ban uh, to, uh, so it's this idea again, what he calls a nuzul al-ilahi. So I'll just say a nuzul al-ilahi just to make it easier for, for the time being. But we've understood what nuzul uh, refers to now. Fayaghfir, and then he forgives uh, he says more than the number of hairs on the uh, which belong to the sheep of kelp, uh, being a tribe, like a, being a, a tribe which had many, many sheep. The idea is that there's uh, an, an enormous and incredible number of people, but it's there to represent not that, okay, they have 5,242 sheep and there's approximately 1 million hairs on each. So therefore, <laughs> you know, it, it's not like that. It's just to express, like it's a metaphor to express an uncountable number of people. Uh, that's the point. He says, فَإِنْ قُلْتَ He says, مُفَادُ الْحَدِيثِ الْمُتَقَدِّمْ أَنَّ الْغُفْرَانِ وَمَا مَعَهُ إِنَّمَا يَكُونُ مَعَ الْمَطْلَبِ He says, وَيُؤَيِّدُهُ مَا رَوَاهُ الْدَيْلَمِيَ عَنْ ابْنِ عُمَرِ رضي الله تعالى عنهما أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله غافر إلا لمن أبى قيل ومن أبى يا رسول الله قال من لا يستغفر So he says, so if you say now, this is like an objection, it's an implicit objection, that the indication now of the previous hadith is that this mercy and forgiveness, and that which comes along with it, he said only happens if you seek it, right? And he says also, i.e. that you seek forgiveness and then you are forgiven. So he says also the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar in Daylami also says this, right? In Allah ghafirun illa liman aba. Allah is forgiving and will forgive, except for somebody who who uh, objects or refuses. So, uh, and who is that? Oh, my self, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, il man la yastaghfir. Right? He said, man la yastaghfir. I.e. somebody who doesn't uh, seek forgiveness. I.e. so if you miss out the opportunity, then you're not part of those who are forgiven. So he says, وَيُعَارِضُهُ now, ظَاهِرُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ وَظَاهِرُ مَا رَوَاهُ بْنُ مَاجُعَ عَنِ بْنِ أَبِي مُسَى الْأَشْعَرِ <clears throat> so um yeah sorry the the um he says uh you ayyiduhu in the previous uh, uh in the previous uh, paragraph 
you aid the idea that you have to ask for forgiveness as was obvious but just just because the next point he just re-emphasizes that point it says the vahir of the previous this hadith now i.e وظاهر ما رواه ابن ماجة عن ابن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله لا يطلع ليلة النصف من شعبان فيغفر لجميع خلقه إلا لمشرك أو مشاح <تصفيق> so, uh, الله سبحانه وتعالى now um, he says uh, this idea of the itdila, which we talked about, which is the the directing uh, once uh, the the direction with a greater um, uh, focus on the ibad with mercy. Uh, again, not in a human sense, but it's that that's how the ulama explain it, so you, we can understand what exactly this means. This is the idea of the itdila. Um, <clears throat> um, so he says, So he forgives all of creation. Except for somebody who is a polytheist, somebody who uh, is ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or a mushahin, somebody who bears some type of uh, grudge or somebody who has some type of hatred within their heart. So he says, so, so the idea is that he's trying to resolve uh, this uh, this case now. So in the sense that you have some hadith which appear to indicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everybody on this night, right, as it were. So uh, it's about And then in other hadiths, it appears to indicate that <clears throat> had some people are excluded from this, right? Some people are excluded. So he says, so it's been said now, in joining between these different narrations, like in order to make sense of them, and that's what he means here. He says, "Inna al-awwala fi man asar, wa thani fi ghairihi." So the first is now with respect to somebody who is, uh, who continually engages in in sin. Uh, Israr is kind of sinning without, um, you know, on a on a consistent basis, on a regular basis. And he says, "Wa thani fi ghairihi." And he says, and the second is in basically in other cases, right? So, uh, so that that's how he he wants to resolve it. So the idea is that so so one some of the hadiths are in reference to those types of people I engaged in those types of things, and the other hadiths are in reference to everybody else, right? So that's that's basically how he. So the idea is that at the end of the day, you end up with no ta'al. It's just in reference to different cases. That's the point of the different hadiths. And then he just, uh, just a linguistic point. He just says, So he says, It says somebody who has um, um, who has some type of, uh, uh, you know, it's like some type of opponent who has some type of um, dislike um, or, or he's manifesting some type of adawa, uh, you know, dislike or contempt or hatred towards another. He says, nafsihi. Um, because of some type of personal interest, perhaps uh, a sense of a, a, a grudge, as it were. Or he says, only eminent dunyawi, or because of some worldly matter, right? So because of some uh, some worldly matter, he says, المخاصم, ديني, He says, as for somebody who is um, uh, is um, not on um, you know the best terms, as it were, because of a religious matter, he says, then such a person is not. Uh, prevented from the maghfirah. So it's only when somebody, so who's the mushahin basically? That's what he's talking about in this hadith. So he says, uh, everybody will be forgiven except the mushrik and the mushahin. Right? So who's the mushahin? This one he's trying to get across. So if it's just like a personal kind of grudge that you have against somebody, then such a person, like, like they need to work on their heart. <laughs> right? Because otherwise it, it prevents from uh, winning onto that mercy. But if there's a religious reason Right for uh for that manifesting, you know the, the this this reality manifesting, um maybe because somebody is engaged in Marcia or something like that, so that's why they've kind of distanced themselves, as it were, um towards uh, this other individual, uh then uh, then this is not uh, uh then this is actually praiseworthy, right? So this is this is fine. So this is why uh, such a person is not prevented from 
um, any type of maghfirah in that case. He says, وَمِمَّنْ يُحْرَمْ الْمَغْفِرَةَ فِي تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةِ And then he mentions uh, actually a number of other cases where people are Um, and of course, some of these uh, hadiths, uh, again, there's, uh, you could say that there's some discussion uh, about them, but at least some of them um, are quite sound, especially this final hadith that we talked about, uh, and some versions of that are, have been deemed sound uh, by the ulama uh, with the reliable narrators uh, as um, Ibn Hajar al-Haythami, uh, who has the Majma al-Zawaid, not the Haythami, who is the Faqih uh, al this is somebody else. Um, and um, also Hafizuddin al-Iraqi also comment, uh, comments on some of the uh, hadiths um, um, as well, indicating uh, their soundness. So these are uh, sound reports then, uh, what we talked about, you know, the earlier hadith. So he says here, um, other people are also, uh, as we know from other uh, other hadiths and the like, they're also prevented from attaining unto mercy and forgiveness on this night. So who are they? Uh, somebody who's a murderer. قاتل النفس والزانية التي تكتسب بفرجها and uh, the Zania is somebody who is an adulteress somebody who is uh, uh, prostituting herself basically it says والعشار الذي يأخذ العشر بغير حق somebody who uh, takes the عشر now uh, payments uh, for uh, it's almost like a tax on land produce it's taken without due right um, he says وقاطع الرحم and somebody who uh, breaks off uh, family ties um and of course, breaking off of uh, family ties, like they say, aqal asila is a salam. <laughs> the least of sila is that if they were before, you would say salam to them, right? So it's almost like uh, th that's the least of it. Wa'aqul um, walidain. Of course, that's why I said that a lot of the that we could do this salam over many days, right? Because there's so many issues in it, and we actually, if we explore each issue, it could take time, right? So somebody who is uh, wrong, right, and undutiful towards their parents. Um, again, does that mean you have to obey your parents and everything? No, it doesn't. That, that's not what it means. Um, so, uh, but again, there's a fiqh to this, just like there's a fiqh to everything else. He says, وَمُدْمِنُ الْخَمَرُ And somebody who is um, a drunkard, وَالْمُصَوِّرُ And somebody who is, uh, again, takes pictures. Again, what does that mean? Right? Don't just, uh, it's a picture maker. What does that mean? Like you can't just uh, apply it to whatever you whatever you feel like uh, is in your mind. Uh, there's a certain manner. These ha these all have aql walidain. Again, all of these things, like anybody could say, qatil uh, nafs. You could say um, it's just any nafs. Like even like you killed a rabbit once, right? So you're uh, you know you're qatil now, right? So according to that, so so the idea is that there's details for all of these things. And th that's why you shouldn't jump to us. You shouldn't make assumptions. Right? You just jump to conclusions um, about. Uh, yeah, about things. He says, well, muhtab ay an -namam. Ignore your comments. Um, an -namam, um So he says, uh, so the tail bearer, right? And uh, again, somebody who's unable to con control their uh, their tongue. Well, kahin and the uh, fortune teller. Wohom man yukhbir anil maghibat al-hadifa wal-irif wohom man yukhbir anil umur al-maldiyati al-ghaiba. <clears throat> yeah, so this is uh, somebody who tells uh, about the uh, about the future uh, events to come. Uh, and the had, oh, I'm sorry, uh, where have I gone? <clears throat> events to come. Uh, this is the fortune teller, and then you have the Irif, uh, which is somebody who is uh, tells uh, things about the past. So I'm not sure if anybody has a name for that, uh, but this is Anil Umul Maldia Al Ghaiba, which were unknown to people. Um, so uh, they tell about so it's like a, a backwards fortune teller <laughs> whatever the word for that is um, he says uh, yeah and then uh, somebody who's collecting taxes as it were on behalf of the sultan on behalf of the, the person who's in charge he says uh, are you somebody who's a, a, effectively a tax collector it's taking uh, uh, money wrongfully from people I dig to carry on over here. You have to pay me ten dollars, right? To carry on walking down the street. So it's that uh, this is you can't do things like that. Uh, he says was uh, somebody who is a magician, uh, sorcerer, somebody engaged in uh, in sahir magic, that type of thing. Was shahir الذي ينشد أو ينشئ الشعر المذموم. And he says uh, somebody who is a poet uh, who sings uh, or uh, or comes up with uh, poetry which is blameworthy. 
And he says, what is that? Wa huwa hajju man la yastahiq al-hajju aw madhu man la yajuz madhuhu. So he says, I could either speaking ill of somebody who isn't deserving of uh, being spoken ill about. Uh, he says, or praising somebody uh, whom it is impermissible to praise. Right? So that's uh, blameworthy uh, poetry. So again, like I mentioned before, all of these things have a have a fit, right? So um, don't take your deen <laughs> just from a random kind of sentence and a dictionary definition of what you saw in some book somewhere. That's that's not how it works. Right. Deen like right? Watch out from where you take your deen from, how you take it, how you understand deen, what's the context. Again, for many of these types of things, that's why Rasail they always have a context. And that's why I mentioned over here that we're assuming right, there's like an assumption that you have some type of background on various issues because that's how you'll have clarity with respect to what it is that he's talking about. Otherwise, it will just kind of remain unclear. He says, and somebody who is a highway brigand, and somebody who uh, has this long, uh, it's kind of like a guitar, like a almost like a guitar string kind of instrument. It's a bit long. Well, is like a large drum. Uh, so he says, and somebody who lowers uh, the, keeps their, uh, lower garment uh, beneath their ankles, he says. Uh, he says, "I somebody who does so out of vanity, out of pride, right? Out of pride. Uh, I not somebody who does so uh, just because that's where it happens to be, or somebody who didn't, uh, who's not paying attention, or it's a custom, or it's um, there's no pride in it, but it's just that's that's just where it reaches, and so on and so forth. So again, that's that's not what uh, that situation doesn't fall under this hadith." Like these hadiths are speaking about something specific. He says, "Wal mutakabbir against somebody who has pride." He says, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, la yadkhul al-jannata man fi qalbihi mithqal wadharat min kibrin." Right? No, uh, the, the, uh, anybody who has even the tiniest amount of uh, pride uh, within them, they won't enter into paradise. They won't enter into jannah. <coughs> And of course, these types of things are not to, so somebody gets so worked up that I might have pride, I might not have pride. This is wasosa, right? Uh, the idea is that some of these things will be zahir. Uh, somebody actually is wearing this thobe. I'm wearing this uh, this thobe uh, to look good, so people start complimenting me. So people, it's like it's that type of thing. I get I'm, I'm driving this my my nice car to the occasion, so people can see I've got loads of money, right? It's like that. That's the idea of kibbutz. Right, and it's not just like uh, some hidden kibbutz, which of course is possible. But the idea is that that's not, um, it's not like the place of uh, wasawis and the like. So um, it's not for somebody to turn around and then just start weeping over the fact that they have, uh, they might have uh, kibbutz and they don't know where it is and what it is, and it's going to lead them to the nard. This is all waswasa, right? This is, this is all satanic uh, misgivings and the like. But of course, it do that doesn't mean that mashallah, I'm so humble. Look at me. <laughs> so and that's why the ulama said that anybody who recognizes their humility, then they are in reality mutakabir, right? So look at me, look at how humble I am, right? So um, and that's why uh, don't make it all about your nafs, but make it about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He says, وَكُلٌّ مِنْ هَؤُلَاءِ إِذَا تَابَ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُحْرَمُ الْمَغْفِرَةُ لِأَنَّ تَوْبَةَ تَهْدِمُ كُلَّ حُبَّةٍ. So he says, and all of these people now, if they repent, uh, then he says, then they won't they won't be prevented from their maghfirah. Because a repentance, it completely brings uh, sins to, it completely wipes them out. Right? That, that's the nature of um, <clears throat> of Tawbah. But of course, if the sin, you have to fulfill the shuruat of Tawbah. Right? What does it mean? Tawbah means astaghfirullah, I stole a million dollars, like astaghfirullah, now I just go and spend a million dollars on buying what I want. Uh, of course, that's not how it works. There are shurut which you have to fulfill, uh, and especially if, if it relates to any type of haq, which is due either to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, or any of the ibad, that that haq needs to be fulfilled, right? So if it relates to like, uh, you know, uh, somebody missed a prayer, for example, then they have to make up that prayer. Um, if somebody stole something or did something wrong uh, and uh, took uh, wrongfully took away the right of another individual, then that would need to be returned to that individual. Um, that this is how you... Uh, redress uh, wrongs 
uh, that it's not simply putting one's hands in the air and just saying, um, sorry about that, and, um, you know, Allah forgive me, and I move on now. And like, uh, as the Prophet ﷺ says, وَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا Right? <laughs> and he cursed so-and-so, وَقَدْ ضَرَبَ هَذَا And he hit so-and-so, and he did this, and he did that, and, and did that. And this is the Muflis. The Prophet ﷺ told us about the Muflis, that who is the one who is bankrupt. Right? So he comes with many hasanat, but he also did a lot of wrong. A lot of wrong, which uh, accounted to um, taking the rights of other people. Right? Um, and um, and this is why it's very dangerous, and this is why you have to be very, very careful. So he says, <clears throat> okay. So he says, and in summary now, what's understood from all of these reports is that the night of the 15th of Sha'ban is a night of tremendous rank, tremendous virtue. And he says it's one of those nights uh, whose, uh, again, nights are akin to the day. And the day is akin to the night in terms of its virtue, which again adds to the, the, the what we've been talking about previously. Which is the idea is that the, the, there's a there's certainly some type of marriage which is established, and even without that hadith, there's still an idea of like he's affirming even without the hadith, there's some type of uh, special khususiyah, uh, uh, distinguishing characteristic which manifests with respect to this day and like this night and also its day. He says just like other special days in the calendar. So he says um, like what he says, just like Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr also its day, right? Are both considered to be meritorious. He says Laylat Arafah and also the day. The night of Arafah is a tremendous night. The day of Arafah is a tremendous day. The night of Jum'ah is a tremendous night. The day of Jum'ah is also a tremendous day. So he's saying that this is the nature of these special nights in the calendar. Right? And of course there's others as well, like the first 10 days, uh, 10 days and nights, uh, for example, the nine. Um, of course, the ninth being Arafah. Right? But the idea is that the eight days before, these are also tremendous, uh, tremendous days, right? And that's why there's a whole discussion, right? Well, Fajri, well, Ashr, right? So these uh, 10 nights, what 10 nights, right? So these uh, 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah are very special as well. Anyway, we're not talking about Dhul Hijjah right now. <laughs> we're only in Sha'ban. <laughs> we'll think about Dhul Hijjah when we get to Dhul Hijjah. In <clears throat> Ahiyan Allahu Ta'ala. So, uh, Again, just a couple, just a couple of points now. Um, um, what does it mean now to spend this night uh, to to bring uh, life, as it were, uh, to this night? Because if you look at the fuqaha, because he's not, he's just talking just generally. He's trying to establish the merit. He established the merit through the through the nos. He's not bringing. Um, either nusul like the prophetic nusul and statements of the Sahaba and the early Muslims and the like. Um, that's how you establish some type of merit, and that's what he's done over here. But also, it's it's useful to be aware of the fact that the fuqaha have also spoken about the merit of this night, and about doing ihya of this night, uh, of this night, which is to bring it to life. Uh, so, what exactly does that mean? Um, you know, the ulama mentioned that um, that of course the a central part of it, as was understood previously uh, from the hadith, which was waqumu laylaha, right? To to engage in Qiyam. Uh, Qiyam is simply praying at night. Uh, what are they looking for? Uh, they, they're looking for isti'ab, which is that you do so for the entirety of the night. <laughs> and of course, uh, and some were a bit more, some of the ulama a bit more merciful. And they said uh, that uh, most of the night uh, suffices. Now, of course, uh, when it comes to uh, most, then the ulama, there's also a different principle, which is that al-akthar <laughs> al-kul. And most of something takes the ruling of the entirety of it. And of course, the night begins at Maghrib, ends at Fajr. So um, so at least right now, um, in the UK, for example, uh, Maghrib is about 5.30 and uh, Fajr is roughly the same, uh, something like 5.30. So, um, so, so as long as you're basically 
um, you're in ibadah, you're engaged in ibadah from maghrib till about, um, even though, of course, the latter part of the night is, all, is always going to be superior, but uh, 5.30 till about, uh, you know, close to midnight, um, then uh, you've certainly uh, fulfilled uh, a good uh, portion, like that's a tremendous, uh, tremendous amount. And of course, if somebody can keep going for the entirety of the night, then that's uh, that's uh, obviously much more mujahada, and the greater the mujahada and greater the struggle, the greater the thawab and the greater the ataya and the benefits and the fawaid which manifest and the divine gifts and lights and the like, and they manifest in accordance with, uh, you know, the amount of effort which goes into these types of things, just like in everything else. <clears throat> in in life generally, uh, but of course uh, it, it doesn't mean that you have to pray now for six hours on the trot. Um, that's why the ulama also mentioned uh, that uh, that any type of uh, nawafil prayers, uh, without uh, specifying anything in particular, and also recitation of the Quran or uh, hearing hadiths of the Prophet Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or reciting those hadiths, uh, or engaging in tasbihat or, or praise of Allah subhanahu wa taala, or sending blessings on the Prophet Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, these are all tremendous uh, acts. So anything that you do is uh, is all khair, right? Whatever khair you. So even just being in a dars, right? Being in a dars is of tremendous khair. And the ulama they already talked about this anyway um, at, uh, at other occasions, like just spending time in uh, learning uh, fiqh, for example, uh, spending time with the books of the fuqaha and the like, um, and how the the there's a tremendous uh, uh, thawab which manifests as a res result of that, assuming that somebody do is doing so with ikhlas and they have an intention uh, for that to be um, to to be of benefit. Uh, of course, first and foremost for themselves, but the idea is that naturally these types of things uh, impact other people, impact family, friends, and your circle, and people see the religiosity within you, and it manifests and permeates uh, through the circles uh, around you as well. So, of course, there's always a, a great khayr in those types of things. So even if you are simply engaged in a daris and recitation of the Qur'an, you do all kinds of different things. That's, of course, uh, how also not to get bored. <laughs> that's why uh, that's why the ulama uh, would kind of say these types of things as well. At the very least, you can't do anything. You have a terrible work schedule and it's too difficult to take time off and so on and so forth. Just do the best you can. Right, so even even uh, because some of the ulama they were extremely merciful and said just even if you just pray two rakahs, right, inshallah you'll attain unto the vulgar of that night because the greatest part of it is the moment in which you are connected to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that so that dua that moment of dua um, it could be greater than somebody who spends the entire night um, uh, engaged in all kinds of ibadat, but their qalb is ghafil. Right, but their qalb is distracted by dunya, distracted by something else, distracted by food and drink, distracted by anything of the world, worldliness, which takes them away from the purpose of the night. So um, so it's important that you don't get distracted from the purpose of the night, that everything should be calling you to that one thing. Right. So everything is calling you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, there's other things uh, that are <clears throat> um, also mansoors, uh, uh, like uh, like having a bath, right? So uh, this is also one of the recommended occasions uh, to have a bath, especially for the nights in wh which you are expected to do ihya, bring them to life. Then this is actually it's actually recommended. Um, and Mullah Ali Al Qari again, although there might be issues with the hadith, but um, but I'll just mention it just because uh, it's it's there and um, that there's a general fadila of reciting Surah Al Dukhan. Uh, so that's why, um, which is what we'll actually be talking about in a moment as well. That although that's not specific to Laylatul Bara'a, uh, Laylatul Bara'a, but it's um, it's something which is uh, which is transmitted. But again, there might be questions over the hadith, um, and uh, and many of the fuqaha have mentioned, uh, of course, the idea of uh, of ihya. Um, Amongst them, uh, of course, uh, Imam, uh, you know, Shunan Bulali and uh, Hal Kafi and uh, the Ibn Nujaim both. Uh, 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 Zayn al and also his uh, his brother Omar, uh, and also uh, the, many of the later writers like Ibn Abidin and so on, uh, they've all mentioned uh, the the virtue of doing ihya um, at this time. Uh, time. There's also one very very interesting uh, point um, in the in the Tabyan of Mullah Ali al Qadi, which I'll mention inshallah the final point just before we move on. And he says, وَبِهَذَا تَبَيَّنَ جَوَازُ مَا يَفْعَلُهُ النَّاسُ فِي بِلَادِ مَا وَرَاءَ النَّهَرِ so, um, so he's talking about some uh, some hadith, and then he makes a couple of comments, and then he says, and based on this, now it becomes clear that what uh, that people what people do now in the lands Mawara and Nahar, like beyond the beyond the river, the the Oxus, is this Bukhurasan, Warum, Malquds, Walhind, Wagaidiha. 
right? And also in Khurasan, in, in, in the Persian lands, in the Ottoman lands, and also in Quds, right? In Quds. Um, um, well, Hind, and he says in India and other places, he said, right? Of a uh, hundred rakahs. In each rakah, he says, كل ركعة فيها سورة الإخلاص عشر مرات. Right. In each rakah, you recite Surah Al-Ikhlas ten times. He says, على ما ذكره صاحب القود والإمام الغزالي في الإحياء وغيرهم. He says, based on what was mentioned by um, Abu Talib al-Makki in his Qut al-Qulub, uh, which is kind of like the asal for the Ihya of Imam al-Ghazali. And, um, and also, I think the, uh, although I, I forgot to double check it, but um, but even the Diyah al-Ma'nawi, um, or, or the Muqaddimat al Ghaznawi might uh, might actually mention mention it, uh, but some of the ulama they do mention mention this, which is also termed the uh, salat al alfiya, as it were. You end up reciting a hundred uh, rakahs, uh, and you do the surah al ikhlas ten times in each rakah, right? So you end up with a thousand. Uh, you know you've recited al Allahu ahad a thousand times. So, uh, but it's just fascinating again how Mullah Ali al Qari. He kind of, uh, look, but also look, it's not just like five people in, in a mosque that you don't like uh, doing it and you think it's a bid'ah. It's like he's saying what people are doing, fi bilad ma wara nahar, wa khurasan, wa rum, wa quds even in Beit al right? Even in Jerusalem. And he says, and even, um, and he says, even in India and everywhere, they're all praying the Salat al alfiya What is it? Now, of course, all of us are like, what on earth is the Salat al alfiya Never heard of that in my life. Never done that before. <clears throat> and that's fine. And that's fine. It's not matloop. It's not sought from you. It's something which people did at a certain time. But the idea is that what, what have you done? Right? What do you do on that night? Right? You're just eating popcorn and just chilling and watching like a, a YouTube live of somebody talking about something. Or you're actually putting, is there some type of mujahada? Because here they're talking about actual real life Muslims. Right? Who are like, not like, we're not talking about a Shaykh al-Islam. Right? Just talking about your average Muslim. He's going to recite now. He's going to stand for 100 rakahs like on this night. So the idea is that you know, sometimes, like, even if you say, okay, never done this, and it's like, yeah, but maybe your grandma's grandma did it, right? So maybe somebody did it, right? So, and but again, the point is not that you do this now. It, I'm just bringing it up as, like, a fascinating issue because he references, like, certain athar and the like. And again, there's a lot of issues and question marks over those hadiths. But um, but again, it's that idea of there's some type of asal, something about it. Uh, this is why all of these ulama are mentioning it. This is why it's in the Ahiyah. This is why Qutul Qulub, again, they're not mentioning it as a Sunnah. They're saying, look, this is a praiseworthy Salat. Right? You should do this. And um, and the ulama are just transmitting it. Right? And it falls under general asas. There's nothing prohibited about it. Right? There's nothing prohibited. Just recite Surah Ikhlas. Can you repeat the Surah 10 times? There's nothing wrong with it. Right? Just don't affirm it's a Sunnah. Right? Don't affirm it's a Sunnah. It falls under a general asal. Then you're good. you're good to go. Right, so that that's like that. That's how they're considering these types of issues, but and that's why I gave everything else first to show you all of the options that you have. But also, this just as an aside that this also exists. Some of the ulama have mentioned it. Um, anyway, um, um, he does actually also mention uh, the idea of um, doing salat al tasbih, right? Salat al tasbih uh, on this night. Uh, which uh, of course also has uh, any um, there's a uh, merit uh, many merits which are associated with it uh, and that's of course more strongly established so Mullah Ali Al-Qali also mentions uh, that um, so anyway that's just uh, touching upon uh, some of the things that uh, some of the ibadat which you can engage in on this auspicious uh, occasion but at the end of the day, at the end of the day like we said the, as long as uh, your heart is present within it, right? So not uh, not with uh, ghafla, otherwise uh, meaningless uh, ghafla and just uh, just reeling things off is not really going to be of benefit. And that's why if you don't know anything in the Arabic isn't really doing anything for you, then just make dua in English, make it in your mother tongue, just, just make it meaningful, right? <clears throat> so, so he says, وَلِلَّيْنَةِ النَّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ أَسْبَعُنْ كَثِيرًا So he says, and also the لَيْنَةِ النَّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ has many names, and of course many names, uh, uh, usually indicative of ta'zim, 
right, of something. And that's why they give it many names. So he says, Minha Laylatul Qismati wa Taqdeer, the night of division and apportionment. He says, Lima Rui an Aba ibn Yasir, and Nahu Kal, either can a Layla to Nisfi min Shaban, Yensa Humanakul Moti, Kulla man Yamutu min Shaban, Ila Shaban, or in the Rajul, Layazlim, Wayafnu, Wayanki, and Nikah, one Nisa, Wayaris, min al Rars, Wakan Nusik a smoo, min al Ahia il and Amwat. Um, so he says uh, it's reported from Ata ibn Yasir, and then he said that once it's 15th of Shaban, then the uh, the angel of death describes everybody who will die from this Shaban till the next Shaban. And he says, and a person um, goes uh, um, engages in uh, all types of uh, oppression and wrongdoing, and then I can he marries, gets married, he marries a woman, and then he um, he he does whatever, and he says, and his. Uh, and his name has been, uh, you know, transcribed as the as one of those who will die, right, in this uh, in this coming year. Um, I, and he's oblivious to that fact, but this is what happens at this. أنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم من شعبان ما لا يصوم من غيره فسئل فقال شعبان شهر ترفع فيه الأعمال لرب العالمين وأحب أن يرفع عملي وأنا صائم. So again, uh, you see uh, the idea of um, the the praiseworthy nature of fasting in the month of شعبان. Right. So what happened? The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام would uh, would fast in this month and, um, so much so that he would like uh, completely. It's a completely different way of fasting compared to other months, right? He says, for so he's asked about this. So he says, this is the month in which Shaban is the month in which acts acts are raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, and I and I love for my acts to be raised whilst I'm fasting. Right? So this is uh the wisdom in fasting at this time. He says, Well, are you of course not specific to the 15th Shaban, but generally in the month of Shaban. He says, ولا ينافيه ما رواه الترمذي من أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يتحرى صوم الخميس والاثنين وقال إنهما يومان تعرض فيه فيهما الأعمال فأحب أن يرفع عملي وأنا صائم. Um, so he says it's not negated by that which is uh, related and reported by Imam Tirmidhi now that the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام used to uh, uh, you know, s seek out uh, Thursdays and Mondays for fasting. He says uh, that these are two days in which uh, actions are presented. <coughs> so he says, so I love for my actions to be presented whilst I'm fasting. He says, because it's لجوازي رفعي أعمال الأسبوع مفصلة وعمال العام مجملة. Because it's possible for the actions to be raised in a specific way, in a detailed manner, on a weekly basis, and in a general manner, on a yearly basis. Right. So he says, وَأَمَّا رَفْعُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَإِنَّهُ فِي اللَّيْلَةِ مَرَّةً وَبِالنَّهَارِ مَرَّةً And also the, the angels, right? So as they switch positions, the angels of the night, the angels of the day, there is also رَفْعُ of the أَعْمَالِ uh, which, uh, which happens. So, uh, so he says that's also on a daily basis. So he says, وَرُوِيَ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةِ النِّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ وَلَيْلَتَيْ الْعِيدِ لَمْ يَمُتْ قَلْبُهُ يَوْمَ تَمُوتُ الْقُلُوبِ that whoever stands on the night of Shaban, uh, i.e. the 15th of Shaban, sorry. He says, and also the two nights of the Eid, of, uh, Eid, Eid al adha and Eid al-Fitr, then his heart will not die on the day that hearts die, i.e. on the final day that his heart will still be alive at that time. يعني لم يمت قلبه بمحبة الدنيا حتى تصده عن الآخرة. Okay, so sorry, he interpreted it uh, a different way. So he said uh, that his uh, heart now won't die <clears throat> uh, he says uh, through love of the dunya he says uh, such that it stops him from working uh, towards the akhirah he says that don't uh, sit with those whose hearts are dead he says uh, such that your hearts die right um, this, uh, this is what happens right so this is why al mar'u when people spend time with others, then they they start to acquire uh, their sense, right? So if that sense is not exactly praiseworthy, then uh, then that's the sense that's the, the that's the kind of scent that they acquire. Um, and that's why it's important to kind of choose one's uh, company well. <clears throat> and um, 
He says, وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ يَعْنِي لَا يَتَحِيَرْ قَلْبُهُ لَا عِنْدَ النَّزْعِ وَلَا فِي الْقَبَرْ وَلَا فِي الْقِيَمَةِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ Okay, so this was, the, this was my interpretation of it. Uh, but so he mentions this here, that, um, that his heart will be firm at the point of death and in the grave and also on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And he says, وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ So this is actually the first um, part of his uh, risala. Um, and now he wants to move uh, to something else, which are his um, insights into uh, the, the beginning verses of Surah Al-Dukhan. فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى حَامِينَ وَالْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينَ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ مُبَارَكَةٍ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْدِعِينَ Sorry, that was from the uh, from the Mahaqiq. Um So, um, any questions, comments? Everybody with me? Following? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. So this uh, this next section now, um, I'm going to do it a little a little bit more quickly uh, because um, he's kind of established the merit, and that was like the key part of the uh, the risala. And then he wants to get into the tafsir now, and there's some details. And again, <laughs> he starts getting more technical, and he starts get because as you get into tafsir, then he starts talking about Arab, and he starts talking. And I don't want to have to explain <laughs> everything out because I also it's getting late here. So uh, so I'm going to do it a bit more quickly, and inshallah. Um, You'll be able to make sense of it, and I'll try to make uh, brief comments uh, where possible. Uh, but let's uh, let's see what he says. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So he says, Amin. Walkitab al Mubin. Inna anzalnahu fi laylat mubarakat. Inna kunna mundiri. Fiha yufraq kull amr hakim. Amr min gindina. Inna kunna mursidin. رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Okay, um, so, so of course, first, like, um, what does he say? So, Hamim, and by, uh, makes an oath by the, uh, by the clear book, that, that we have revealed this, by this, uh, this Qur'an now, in a blessed night, and for we always warn, right? Um, against uh, evil and the like. He says, فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ That this is um, a night in which uh, matters are clearly uh, distinguished, i.e. and affirmed. He says, أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا Yeah, a matter from from us. He says, إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ that, that we surely sent messengers. رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ a, a mercy uh, from your Lord. إنه هو السميع العليم. He is the All uh, Hearing, the All Knowing. <clears throat> so, um, so very briefly, what's he going to talk about now? He's going to talk about this. Uh, this he's going to break down this um, these uh, few verses and try to explain how they all fit together. So, of course, he has Hamim first, and this is the idea of there being a challenge to the disbelievers, as you all are aware, with the huruf al So, this is how he uh, begins. So, he's going to explain uh, that first, and he's going to talk about the idea of the qasam, which manifests through wal kitab al mubin, also in the in how he will explain it. <coughs> And um, uh, and then he says, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylati mubaraka." So also uh, note the sense of uh, tankir, uh, the fact that it's nakira also indicates the tremendous nature. That's also um, what's understood through the tankir, through the the fact that it's nakira. It's not marifa. You understand the sense of ta'adim from it. And he says, "Inna kunna mundirin." Um, so of course the the um, the uh, you know, the, the kuffar deem this to be far-fetched, right? So this is like almost like a response to them over here. إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْدِرِينَ فِيهَا يُفَرَقُوا كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ And yeah, this is interesting now because we'll see uh, as he uh, will explain um, how there's uh, a connection between these different things. So um, uh, in the sense that um, the Laylati Mubarakatim, why is it Layla Mubaraka? Because Yufraku Kulu Amrin Hakim. Right? So this is why it's a Layla, which is Mubaraka. 
um, and he's going to talk about the sense of the the the, the illa and what like uh, you, we'll see it in just in just a moment. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice um, how he's going to um, explain what exactly uh, that means. Um, uh, and then also this idea of amram min hindina. Right, so fiha yufraku hulu amin al hajj amram min hindina, which he's again he's going to talk about. The idea, even just in the sense of, and of course this is in tafsir now, you have to go to tafsir to understand, even just the change of the Amrin Hakim to Amran, right, is like, it, it gives a sense of Dalim, right, because it could have been Amrin Hakim min Indina, right, so it could have just been like that, but the idea is that when you go back to Amran over here, it gives a tremendous sense of Dalim, so there's a lot of Dalim, and that's the nature of the surah, even in the, in the sense of the, uh, and some of the tafsir you talk about this as well, the idea of like how the the shortness of the ver verses and and like and the kind of uh, the sense that you get uh, from it, the style and the huruf which are used and so on. Um, of course, the mufassirin talk about everything. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so why would the messenger send again? <laughs> right, because you're most uh, you're in great need. Of of this and of guidance and um, and so on. So so that's basically a summary of what he's going to say now. Right. So uh, so let's see. Uh, so so he says. اختلف العلماء في لفظ حامين كغيره من الأحرف الواقعة في أوائل السورة. So the علماء differ about the purport of حامين like other حروف مقطعة. فالمختار عندهم أنه من المتشابهات التي لا يعلم تأويلها إلا الله. فعلى هذا لا حظ له من الأعراب. So he says the chosen position is that it's from the mutashabihat, which uh, nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that case, it doesn't have a mahal from uh, in Arab. <coughs> he says, <coughs> he says <coughs> So he says that the letter that he mentions here is that it's so he says also said that it is one of the names of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hami. So if that's the case, then it does have a mahal in Arab. So that being said, it could be Rafa, it could be Jar, it could be Nasb, which are all three of all the possible cases, right? So why? Because difference of opinion, is it the thing being sworn by or not? So it's for in Um so if we said no. يكون محله الرفع على أنه خبر لمبدأ محذوف والتقدير هذا المتحدى به مؤلف من جنس هذه الحروف. So if you say it's not the thing which is sworn by, then it's going to be في محل رفع. <coughs> this is it's Arab now. In the sense that how we're supposed to understand what's being said. So على أنه خبر لمبدأ محذوف. So مبدأ is محذوف, and then this is the خبر. So what what is the تقدير of this كلام now? هذا المتحدى this thing which is being uh, 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 you could say uh, the the challenged uh, thing as it were mu'allafun as it were the, the, the Quran as it were it says mu'allafun uh, min jinsi hadhi al-huruf or you could say the challenge comprises of these these huruf aw ala annahu mubtada'an wa khabaruhu wa khabaruhu mahdhuf wa it's mubtada'an the khabar is mahdhuf the khabar is hidden. وَالتَّقْدِيرَ المؤلف مِنْ جِنْسِ هَذِي الْحُرُوفِ الْمُتَحَدَّةِ That which is composed of these letters is the mutahadda. وَعَلَى هَذَا فَالْوَاوُ فِي قَوْلِهِ وَالْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينِ لِلْقَسَمْ So if that's the case, then the wow is the harf al-qasam. Right? So and then the, the, the oath is comprised of al-kitab al-mubin. So... Hamim, that's a separate statement, and then Wal Kitab al Mubin, this is the beginning of the oath. When Kulna bil Awal, so if the, if we say that no, it's the actual thing which is sworn by, you kun mahalluhu al jar bi taqdeer harf al qasam, then it will be fi mahalli jar, right? Bi taqdeer harf al qasam, or in nasab bi nas bi nazeh al khafid, or nasab by removing the the khafid, i.e. the thing that makes it enter into a state of uh, or it being majroor. كما في قولهم الله لا فعلنا بالجر أو النصب أي <coughs> um, yeah because if you say um, if you say الله you say والله لا فعلنا ويسأل الله لا فعلنا 
بنزع الخافض. So he says, وعلى هذا فالواو في قوله والكتاب المبين للعطف. Right, so then what does the wow mean? If that's the qasam now, then what does the wow mean? Because hamim is the qasam now. So this is why he says for kitab mubin, he says this for atf. Right, this just conjoins us and it's not for qasam now. Right, it just conjoins the two statements. لِأَنَّ الْجَمْعَ بَيْنَ الْقَسَمَيْنَ بِدُونِ التَّبَعِيَّةِ عَلَى مُقْسَمٍ وَاحِدٍ مُسْتَكَرَةٍ Right, so for there to be two oaths together, without one being uh, almost like connected to the other as such, um, he says, uh, uh, upon a single thing, he said that this is odious. Right? So so the idea is that we connect these two together. So Hamim wal Kitab al Mubin, this is the whole, like, by Hamim and by the Kitab al Mubin. Right? Um, Inna fi this is the jawab now. So he says, Wal Muradu bi al Kitab al Mubin, al Quran. Wa jawab al Qasmi qawluhu Inna anzalnahu fi laylati mubaraka. So this is the jawab al Qasm. By that's like the linguistic example that he gave before. By Allah, by God, I will do such and such. The idea is always a jawab. It's always you swear an oath to say something. Wallahi kada wa kada. So this is the jawab now. Ayfi laylat al bara'a. Wa hiya laylat ibn Asif min Sha'ban. Kama dhahaba ilayhi ikrima wa man tabi'ahu. Aw laylat al qadr kama dhahaba ilayhi al jumhur. Fi laylat al mubaraka, this blessed night. Most of the ulama said it's laylat al qadr. But some said, and as you can see here, um, and like Akrima and others, that it was a Laylatul Nasif min Sha'ban. He says, وَقِيلَ جَوَابُهُ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْذِرِينَ He says, وَهَذِهِ الْجُمْلَةِ مُعْتَرِضَةِ So it's also been said that the jawab is, إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْذِرِينَ And إِنَّا أَنْزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُبَارَكَةِ It's a parenthetical statement. فإن قلت كيف يصح حمل الليلة المباركة على ليلة النصف من شعبان وقد حكم فيها بأنها أنزل فيها القرآن والقرآن إنما أنزل في ليلة القدر كما قال الله تعالى إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وقد بين سبحانه وتعالى في قوله شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن أن ليلة القدر التي أنزل فيها القرآن في شهر رمضان. So so this is the objection now. Right? How can you say how can you say the Laylatul Mubarakah is Nisaf min Sha'ban, 15 Sha'ban, when the Qur'an has already said that it's Laylatul Qadr? Like in Surah Al-Qadr, for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, it talks about the Qur'an being revealed on this night. So he says, قُلْتُ أُجِيبَ عَنْ هَذَا السُؤَالِ بِأَجْوِبَةٍ ثَلَاثَةٍ He said, I'll respond to this now with three answers. الأول أنه اتفق أن ليلة القدر التي أنزل فيها القرآن كانت ليلة النصف من شعبان بناء على أن ليلة القدر لا ترتص برمضان. So it might have been now that it the ليلة القدر uh, in which the Quran was revealed was ليلة النصف من شعبان based on the fact that ليلة القدر is not necessarily in the month of Ramadan. We have to read the Risala of Laylatul Qadr uh, for everybody. Like, if you think it's 27th, then you might have been misled. <laughs> but inshallah, that's the position of mercy. But the idea is that the ulama have many positions on when Laylatul Qadr is. So that's why he's saying that, yeah, that's fine. It, there's no um, contradiction here. That it's possible that Laylatul Qadr was actually Laylatul Nisr min Sha'ban. Right? Because Laylatul Qadr isn't necessarily in the month of Ramadan, based on that position. But even then, it says, شَهْرَ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهَا الْقُرْآنَ So anyway, um, he says, وَالثَّانِي أَنَّ الضَّمِيرِ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ رَاجِعٌ لِشَيْءٍ مُقَدَّرِ يُفَسِّرُهُ قَوْلُهُ فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ أي إنا أنزلنا أمرا من عندنا في هذه الليلة وهو ما قضيناه وقدرناه من الأرزاق والآجال والإغناء والإفقار إلى غير ذلك على رؤساء الملائكة جبرائيل وميكائيل وإسرافيل وعزرائيل so another one is to say إن أنزلناه is not returning to the Quran but it's returning to something which is hidden. What is that? He says, i.e. that we returned كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ because the next verse is أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا right? A tremendous matter. What is that tremendous matter? He says, uh, all of the things that we have destined on this night like the arzaq and the certain provisions and risk that people will receive in their lifespans and who will be rich and poor and so on and so forth as received by the chief um, angels, the archangels. 
Israel, even though there's a discussion about Israel, is that his name or is it Malik al Maut? And, and anyway, <laughs> he said, This is Sam's position now. So he says, it began on Laylat and Nisaf bin Sha'ban, and it ended on Laylat al Qadr. He says, uh, he says, So we completed the Inzal on Laylatul Qadr. He says, He says, This Inzal on Laylatul Qadr. So, uh, so what does he say now? He said that it was <coughs> that it came down all together, like in one go to the Baytul Izza in the Sama'i Dunya uh, from the Lawh al Mahfuz, right? From the Lawh al Mahfuz. So it's transcribed, as it were. Um, he's a, or, or sorry, uh, it brought down by Sinaj Bril, um, and it was then scribed right, by the Safara. Right, who are in the Baytul Izza. So they ascribed it down. And then it was revealed by Sayyidina Jibreel to the Prophet Ali over 23 years, according to the soundest position. So, so this is how he resolves it now. So the idea is that even if you say that's Laylat al Nasuf min Shaban, even though the Jumhur said it was Laylat al Qadr, right? Remember. But he's just saying, even if you say Laylat al Nasuf min Shaban, then you can still you can still make it work. Right. Um Anyway, it's just a perspective. It doesn't negate that Mufassirin have said something else. But, you know, the, the point is that there's some fact that we can benefit from this. Um, he says, وَوَصْفُهَا بِالْبَرَكَةِ So in the verse, لَيْلَةِ um, مُبَارَكَةِ He says, He says, لِمَا أَنَّ نُزُولَ الْقُرْآنِ سَبَبٌ لِلْمَنَافِعِ الدِّينِيَّةِ وَالدُّنْيَوِيَّةِ بِأَجْمُعِهَا أو بِأَجْمَعِهَا أو لِمَا فِيهَا مِن تَنَزُّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ والرحمة. وإجابة الدعوة وقسم النعمة وفصل الأقضية وفضيلة العبادة. Uh, yeah, so he says, why is it described as being Mubarak? So he says, because the, the Quran is a means for uh, the attainment of so many benefits, religious and worldly benefits. Um, uh, he says, all because the angels and mercy um, uh, descend uh, uh, as a result of it. <clears throat> and he says, uh, uh, so the, the, this is the reason for the Laylat Mubaraka, right? So why is it Laylat Mubaraka? It's either Quran, because the Quran it says, or because the Nazar al Malaika, right? And the Rahma and the acceptance of du'as and the, the, the division of the, the Ni'am and the uh, resolution of uh, certain cases and matters, and there's the Ibadah which takes place and so on. So he says, قوله إن إن كنا منذرين استئناف يبين المقضي للإنزال. The reason for why um, the it was revealed. كأنه قيل إن أنزلناه في ليلة مباركة لأن شأننا الإنذار والتحذير من العقاب أو جواب للقسم وما بينهما أو جواب للقسم وما بينهما اعتراض كما مرة. That's the second um, uh, interpretation. So the idea is that. <coughs> This is this is the illa that we talked about, right? So um, uh, that the what was the reason? He says because we warn, right? And we always send warnings and warnings and the like. With tahdir and warn against the uh, the punishment. He says, or it's a jawab lil qasam, or it's another jawab for the qasam, right? As as was previously mentioned, he mentioned that previously. So waqila, right? Jawab lil qasam. And what's in the middle then is just a parenthetical statement. Or it's a second jawab to the qasam. By this, and also, right? so this is another, another way. You see how all of these things, they impact the meaning. That's why tafsir is so important. Right? So he says, وَاقْتَصَرَ عَلَى النَّذَارَةِ so why did he suffice with nidara? Just warning. And didn't talk about bishara, for example. Like, um, 
giving people glad tidings and good news. So he says, منها أن في النظارة فائدة لكل خير بدليل أن أن أتباع ذوي الشوكة من الأمراء أكثر من أتباع ذوي البركة من العلماء وإذا تعارض عندهم أمر العالم والأمير فقدموا أو قدموا أمر الأمير لما يخافون من إنذارهم وأهملوا أمر العالم So he's just talking about the idea now of there being more benefit, right? More benefit in the indar. How so? He says that people who have uh, power and the like uh, of leaders, he says that they have more followers. So he says then the ulama, uh, the people are baraka and the ulama. So he says if there's uh, conflicting uh, perspectives now of the ulama, the alim and the amir, then they'll give precedence to the amir. Why? Right? Because they fear his his warning. Right, because he's able of like, what's the alim gonna do? I'm gonna do nothing. But the Amir is gonna send his forces, right? If you don't listen, if you don't comply. So, so that's why he's saying that there's a faida in indar. He says also وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ الْإِنْذَارَ هُوَ الْمَقْصُودُ أَوَّلٌ مِنَ الْإِرْسَالِ وَالْإِنْزَالِ. He says also the purpose of the sending of messages and also the the uh, revealing of the Quran. فَإِنَّ الطَّبِيبَ أَمْرَاضِ الْبَدَنِ إِذَا بَشَرَ مُعَالَجَةَ مَرَضِ الْبَدَنِ يبدأ أولا بتنقية البدن عن الأخلاط الرديئة والمواد الفاسدة ثم يباشر المعالجة بالمقويات فكذلك ينبغي للطبيب أمراض القلب أن يبدأ أولا بتنقية القلب عن الاعتقادات الباطلة والأفكار العاطلة أم... ثم يعالجه بما يقوي so, uh, so he says uh, that uh... The, the doctor of uh, sicknesses of the body now, if he wants to cure somebody uh, somebody's sickness, then he'll begin by first purifying the body of these um, uh, the, the the fluids which are bad, right? And all of the uh, all of the things substances within the body which are bad, and then he'll begin uh, giving you things that strengthen the body. He says uh, similarly, amrad and qalb. Similarly, the doctor of the disease of the heart, then he'll begin first with cleansing your heart from false beliefs and the like and the um and uh, realities and reflections which are uh, of no benefit and he says ثم يعالج يعالجه بما يقويه and then he'll uh, uh, على معظمة الطاعات and then he'll give you something which will strengthen you to engage in طاعات بأن يسقيه شربة التبشير بحسني عاقبة الأعمال الصالحة ولهذا اقتصر الله سبحانه وتعالى على ذكر الإنذار من مبدأ أمر النبوة حيث قال يا أيها المدثر قم فأنذر So he says and then he will give you something to drink of glad tidings that uh, of the uh, of the you know the the, uh, the, the good ending uh, or, or the ending of those who in, engage in righteous deeds uh, and uh, of people who engage in uh, such things and that's why he says that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffice with this at the beginning of uh, the prophethood of the Messiah of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as you can see ya ayyuhul maddathir qum fa'anthir that's it there's no bishara right <laughs> so this is the idea is that this is the beginning and then you bring the the tabshir later so he said this is the fa'idah of indhar again wa minha anna al-indhar shamilun li jami'i al-mukallafin min al-umsa wal muti'in <تصفيق> فإنهم جميعا ينتفعون به وإن اختلف الحال بحسب اختلاف المحال فإن البعض منهم ينذر بنار الجحيم والبعض الآخر بنحطات الدرجات في دار النعيم والبعض الآخر بنار الحجاب عن مطالعة الرب الرحيم طريق إلى أهل الله manifesting like over here so he says uh, that uh, it covers uh, everybody who is morally responsible of those who are sinful and those who are pious. And uh, because he says that everybody benefits, even if they are of different states and the like. So he says some will benefit by hearing um, about the uh, the blazing uh, fire, right? Uh, the jahim. And he says, uh, well, uh, um, he says, well, بعض الآخر بنحطات الدرجات. And he says, and some will be warned by the fact that they'll have lower uh, lower degrees, like their stations will be lowered in the abode of bliss, and others binar al hijab, right, with the fire of the hijab of the veil, uh, from uh, uh, seeing Allah subhanahu wa taala and being with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So he says, so some people will be warned by that, right? 
So he says, uh, so everybody benefits from the invalid. Okay, then he says, Qawluhu, inshallah, everybody is following still with me. I haven't lost anyone. Qawluhu fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim isti'nafu al-akhar. Yubayyilu al-muqtadi lil-inzal fi al-laylat al-mubaraka. Right, so uh, some, again, explain the reason for uh, the uh, this blessed night. <clears throat> the inzal happening in this blessed night. Alladhi hiya laylat al-nusaf min sha'ban, according to what he said. Ka'annahu qeel. <laughs> وإنما أنزلناه في تلك الليلة لأن فيها يفرق كل يفرق أمر حكيم فكونها مفرق فكونها مفرق الأمور المحكمة يستدعي أن ينزل فيها القرآن الذي هو من عطائها ويجوز أن يكون صفة أخرى لليلة المباركة وبين بينهما اعتراض he was uh, yeah, he said this a couple of times now but he says uh, because it distinguishes between uh, different ordained matters so he says and the fact that it does that entails that the quran should be revealed within it because this is from the um the the gifts as it were of this um of this time so he says and it's also possible that it's another sifa uh for laylatul mubaraka i laylatul mubaraka and yufraqu kullu amrin hakim is another descriptor of uh, why it's uh, laylatin uh, that what type of layla sorry it is Right, so it's Layla Mubarakah, it's also Layla, Yufraqo Kulu Amrin Hakim Fiha. Fiha Yufraqo Wala Amrin Hakim. Kila Hada Yadulu Ala and the Layla Tel Kadri, and the Halayla Tel Kadr. The Anna Akdar in Nama took the boot of Hussel Fiha, Rila Sumiat Bilayla Tel Kadr. He says, so this all indicates as uh, the Layla Tel Kadr, because destinies and the like are, are written and, ex uh, and uh, explicated as it were, uh, and that's why it's called uh, Layla Tel Kadr. He says, وَأُجِيبَ بِأَنَّهُ يُبْتَدَأُ فِي اسْتِنْسَاخِ ذَلِكَ مِنَ اللَّوْحِ الْمَحْفُوظِ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْبَرَاءَةِ وَيَقَعُ الْفَرَاقُ مِنْهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدَرِ وَبِأَنَّ النَّسْخَ وَالْإِبْرَامِ يَقَعُ فِي لَيْلَةِ النَّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ وَالتَّسْلِيمَ الصُّكُوكِ يَقَعُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ يعني أن الله يقضي الأقضية في ليلة النصف من شعبان ويسلمها ويهيئها لأربابها في ليلة القدر فتدفع نسخة الحروب والزلازل والصواعق والخصف إلى جبريل عليه السلام ونسخة الأرزاق إلى ميكائيل عليه السلام ونسخة المصائب إلى عزرائيل عليه السلام ونسخة الأعمال إلى إسماعيل عليه السلام صاحب السماء الدنيا Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so this is an objection now that this sounds like it's Laylatul Qadr, right? So he says no. He says the beginning of this transcribing now from the Lawh al uh which happens at the hands of the scribes, the Safara. He says happens on. Uh, oh, sorry. This. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a separate thing. So he says from the Lawh al Mahfuz. Um, he says this happens on. Uh, Laylat uh, Bara'a. Uh, min Shaban. So he said so this is uh, transcribed and written. He says, and it it ends on Laylatul Qadr. And he says, and this um and he says, and this uh, transcription happens on uh, Nisuf min Shaban. And he says, and as it were, quote unquote, these documents now are are uh, are given on Laylatul Qadr. Um, i.e. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that um, that he judges all of these matters as it were uh, on the nisaf of min sha'ban that all of these things are uh, uh, are up, you know all of the things which need to be apportioned and everything everything is realized <clears throat> and then he says then it, uh, then it is given to those uh, the arbab i.e. those who, who will take care of it now so he says fadudfa nuskhat al hurub so he says, uh, so that which contains I, the quote-unquote document now, of course, not a literal thing, but the idea is that that's his, again, it's using these words so we can get a sense of uh, uh, the, the mani here. He says, the nusrat uh, al which relates to, to wars and earthquakes and storms and eclipses to Sayyidina Jibreel, and then uh, which relate to Arzaq, to Mikail, those which relate to tribulations to Azrael, and those which relate to um, uh, works to Ismail, who is uh, the sahib of the Sama'i Dunya. It's fine. It says, قَوْلُهُ يُفْرَقُ يُفْرَقُ 
he says yubayyan wa yufassal explain down fully he says qawluhu hakim ay muhkam la yastati ahadun an yata'ana fihi bi wajh min al-wujuh completely firm and uh, uh, yeah completely clear and ordained he says oh you i think it's supposed to be oh yubaddan um so he says, uh, so nothing can be changed and so on and so forth. And it contains <clears throat> and includes all of the arzaq and all of the lifespans, the apportionment of rizq and everything, and also any victories and losses and also droughts and and uh, periods of uh, the opposite of drought, whatever that is, um, the lands being fertile and everything. He says, and all other uh, other realities. He says, uh, um, He says, uh, Okay, that's the second. So he just explained now linguistics with respect to the idea of amra min indina over here. So he says nasbun al ikhtisas, which which would mean amran hasila min indina, a matter which is coming from us in accordance with our wisdom. Um, so he says wajuzu an yakuna halan. He says min kul aw amr. So you end up with like becomes hal now. So in the sense that um, uh, in the state of this Amr being from us, يُفْرَخُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ in a state of this Amr being from us. As opposed to, again, it's just a technical thing. I mean, uh, you know, expressing it in English isn't uh, <laughs> exactly the same. Um, plus, I'm trying to do it quickly. It says, uh, for which I do apologize. قَوْلُهُ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ بدل من قوله إنا كنا منذرين وقيل جواب ثالث بغير عاطف وقيل استئناف. so again just different uh, um, uh, different uh, principles or sorry principles different interpretations for uh, for it. so is it uh, is it a بدل for إن إنا كنا منذرين. right so قوله إنا كنا مرسلين because أفرى is رحمة من عين ربك إياه. so is it بدل for that إنا كنا منذرين إنا كنا مرسلين. Right. Or is it Jawab Thalith the Ghir Atif? Right? Which is the Jawab of the Qasam. And Zalna of Ilayati Mubaraka, Inna Kunna Mundirin, and Inna Kunna Mursirin, a Jawab Thalith. Oh, it's the enough, i.e., just a separate point altogether. Inna Kunna Mursirin. It says, Qawluhu Rahmatan Mir Rabbika, Nasbun Ala, and Nahu Ila Tunli Irsali Mutakhira Tunanhu. So, Rahmatan Mir Rabbika, it's a Ila for it's Inna Kunna Mursirin, Rahmatan Mir Rabbika, because out of a sense of mercy, this is why we sent messengers. He says, على أن المراد بها الرحمة الواصلة إلى العباد وباعث متقدم عليه. That the mercy which is reaching the عباد and uh, the the reason for why um, they were sent. على أن المراد مبدأها أي إن أنزلنا القرآن لأن من عادتنا إرسال الرسل إلى العباد لأجل الرحمة عليهم. So we we reveal the Quran because it's from our way to send messengers to. Uh, the the slaves uh, out of uh, because of the mercy that we have for them. وكان مقتضى القياس يقال رحمة منا لكن وضع الرب موضع ضمير للشعر بأن الربوبية اقتضت ذلك. Right, so it would have been the قياس would have been رحمة منا. Right, you just say رحمة منا. So why is it رحمة من ربك? Right, so he says رب was placed now uh, in in the place of the ضمير. To, to show that lordhood, as it were, entailed this, right? So it was clear for everybody, uh, sorry, for everybody to see and to know and to recognize, right? So that's right, rahmatan min rabbika, that godhood entailed this, rububiyya entailed this. It says, وَلَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَكُونَ قَوْلُهُ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسَنِيَ عِلَّةً لِيُفْرَقُوا أَوْ أَمْرًا 
ورحمة مفعولا علة ليفرق أو أمرا yeah, so he says that إنا كنا مرسلين can't be it can't be now أنا علة ويفرق يفرق كل أمر حكيم أي because إنا كنا مرسلين right so, oh, inna kunna mursaleen, yufraqu kullu amrin haki. Oh, amram min indina, inna kunna mursaleen. So he says it's not possible. Amram min indina, inna kunna, because amram min indina is relating to that over there. So, inna kunna mursaleen, there's not the reason for that. So he says, anyway, it's just a technical issue. But uh, but we covered what he means uh, in the previous point. He said, wa rahmatan maf'oolan bihi, a yafsiru fiha, ya, kullu amrin aw tasdur. الأوامر من عندنا that everything is clarified at this point or the commands come through from us he says لأن من شأننا أن نرسل رحمتنا because from a way that we send forth our mercy فإن, ف... فإن فصل كل أمر من قسمة الأرزاق وغيرها وصدور الأوامر الإلهية من باب الرحمة he says because explaining everything and the apportionment of all of the arzaq and the like of it and for the awamir the divine commands to come through this is all from mercy and all of this is mercy. So, قوله إنه هو السميع العليم بما يعده تحقيق لربوبيته. He says, وأنها لا تتحقق إلا لمن هذه صفاته والله تعالى أعلم. So he says, إنه هو السميع العليم. So this is uh, again realizing Allah سبحانه وتعالى who He is and His صفات entailed all of this. Right? It's it's only because He is سميع and عليم that He is all knowing with respect to what you need. And all hearing of even the the kafara and their refusing and so on, he says. Um, and because of all this, uh, this is why um, uh, all the revelation and everything happened. He says, "Wassallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi ajma'in." Demat. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Um, that is the عقد المرجان في فضلي ليلة النصف من شعبان. Um, so, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I apologize for the speed at which we went through the, the second uh, section of it, but uh, it was uh, the first part, which is where he clearly establishes whatever he wants to kind of say. And then that was just like an addendum where he goes through those verses to talk about the idea of how Laylatul Qadr connects to uh, Laylatul Nisaf Min Sha'ban. And we just read it for completion. Um, otherwise, that's also the reason why I said that some of the ulama, like Mullah Ali Al-Qari, have like a tibyan. Uh, like in his Dibyan where he talks about the uh, Laylatul Qadr and Laylatul Nasr min Sha'ban. So some of the ulama did that. So it's almost like he's following on in the same uh, vein as it were to address some of those issues. But like we said, uh, you know, um, yeah, khairan, I think, uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll uh, call it a day there, um, inshallah ta'ala. So barakallahu ta'ala fikum. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, attendance and engagement and comments and um, today. And and uh, do uh, keep uh, uh, me and everybody else here and uh, in your uh, du'as and of course uh, the uh, the ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and especially al Ghazza and Ahl Quds um, especially at this uh, this time we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a faraj we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for victory and openings and uh, tawfiq uh, and uh, and lutf bi fadlihi wa mannihi wa karamihi and um and inshallah uh um yeah inshallah uh, hopefully there'll be a recording at some point as well um for those um, interested in review um so barakallahu ta'ala fikum wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi